All right guys, today we are going to be doing something that I haven't done in what I feel like a long time, and that is going over EDC Essentials or My EDC Essentials. So today that's what exactly we are going to be doing. We're gonna be covering my top EDC Essentials for 2024. Now I'm saying 2024, it is still technically 2023, but by the time this video releases, it is gonna be probably in November or something like that. So it is gonna be well into very close distance of 2024. So essentially we're gonna be going over EDC Essentials for 2024. Now for those new to this series, I occasionally and routinely try to make this video and update it and stuff like that to essentially cover what I'm prioritizing, what I carry, and what I think. And in past term or past times, I've been super comprehensive. We're going to dial it back just a little bit, not talk about any water bottles or anything like that. But essentially, what I try to do with EDC Essentials is cover the most relevant and useful tools for people that want to live their life every single day. And a lot of this tries to, or I try to be very topical with this. So during things like COVID, there was special considerations to things like riots and social unrest. And so there are some degrees of special considerations with this um, particular type of video format. So to kind of get that out of the way, that's why I do these videos as opposed to just saying, hey, these are things I carry every day. It's kind of giving you guys a why to what I carry. So. Without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So first up, we are going to talk about the technology. So the technology is things like phones, things like watches, especially I have to say things like smartwatches. Smartwatches have come such a far way since they've initially dawned with things like the original Apple Watch. Um, this is of course the Apple Watch Ultra and it is a very capable little watch itself and Obviously, um, there's always some trade-off. A lot of people like the Garmin watches, and there are a lot of good reasons to like Garmin watches. They last a lot longer than Apple watches, but I still habitually, for everyday carry at least, keep coming back to the Apple Watch because as I've said in previous videos, even though it does not have the longest battery life, it is still one of the most comprehensive and capable smartwatches out there on the um, market just in general. And I mean that primarily once again for everyday carry. Um, there's just a lot of things you can do with this. You can use this if you have things like Apple Pay. You can use this to pay for things. You can use this to communicate, obviously, phone calls, text messages. Um, of course, this one interacts with and what a lot of um, smartwatches don't do is they don't interact with other types of messaging platforms. So things like Facebook Messenger, Instagram, you can still text and send messages with this device on those platforms. So very useful for a multitude of things. Of course, there are also the backtrack GPS capabilities of this watch. Um, it has a lot of things, of course. You can also partially dive with this watch. It does have a dive function. And of course, it's not gonna be a professional or it's not gonna beat like a professional dive watch, but it is a decent, I would say, stopgap for a lot of People who, once again, like if you live a more adventurous lifestyle and you decide to, you know, while you're on your vacation to Hawaii, go diving, you know, you're obviously not going to be, you know, like doing underwater welding, but you want to have something that can at least tell you, you know, how far you've gone. And it's fun for those types of situations. So anyways, technology and the watch aside, that is an EDC essential for me. I know it's very controversial because a lot of people are like, you know, it's just a way for, you know, um, people who want to use your information to harvest that information. And it is very true, but at the same time too, there is some malignancy just to life in general. Like you can't get rid of all malignancy in life. So you really have to pick and choose your battles. And I think, especially kind of coming from a healthcare standpoint, it really goes back to what is a comfortable and healthy mix for quality of life. Obviously, once again, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. So you have to try to find a balance between protecting your privacy and your anonymity and also living a full healthy life. So there's always a balance there. There's no perfect solution. 
All right, so now let's move into some more of the tool side of things. So a lot of this really core principle has not changed that much. Now, of course, for me, I am a gun and knife collector. So for me, every time you guys see these EDC essential videos, there's always new guns, there's always new knives. And I don't think that there's any one particular handgun or knife option that's just absolutely perfect. Like there's lots of great options. So for me, we'll go over the next um, EDC essential. And of course, this applies to where and when you can carry handguns I realize not everywhere not every case can you have handguns and you don't always need one everywhere though it I say you don't always need one but it is still always your right to have one so there's a difference between needing and having the right to have something right like you don't need a fast car but you have the right to have a fast car right so same with handguns same with guns in general you know you don't always need one but you do always have the right to them so it's important or you should, I should say. So try to live in places that actually uphold that. Anyways, the next EDC essential is a handgun because I feel like, you know, this is just a simple, basic thing that you can have and have on you just for whatever the case may be. So in this particular case, we have the Springfield Prodigy. It's running the 17 round magazine right now. And for me, as I've shown in some other videos, right now it is running hard cast lead buffalo bore bore. There are a particularly high amount of black bears and wild animals, things such as moose, in my area. So I like having the hard cast lead bullets, these guys in particular, because they do a really good job at penetrating and going through a lot of flesh and a lot of bone and they're the type of ammunition that if you shoot an animal with it it's going to break a scapula bone instead of deforming instead of mushrooming instead of failing to perform so i really do prefer them for outdoorsy types of activities i'm not saying i would go to like cat my with this particular handgun and load but for you know in areas that have high amounts of black bears and stuff. I do think that nine mil with the right ammunition, such as this ammunition here in particular, does make at least a um, competent load, especially for the fact that even though this is a 147 grain plus P loading, so it is hot, it is spicy, it's overpressured, it still is very controllable, especially if you are running a what I would consider heavier handgun platform, something like a Prodigy here, where you know a Glock is going to be a primarily polymer framed handgun. It's going to be a little bit lighter, but something like the Prodigy still uses a blend of polymer and steel for the frame. So you still have a hefty gun that is going to be able to control recoil very well. I mean, even plus P loads to this gun are really very manageable. So I feel like once again, for things like black bears, especially this handgun loading is a totally applicable choice. And I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with it in my personal opinion. So anyways, a handgun is a smart choice. I'm running something that has a decent capacity. I would say in this day and age, though this is not going to be a specific CCW slash self-defense typed handgun video, um, I will say just in this video, I think that when it comes to EDC essentials, running the largest reasonable handgun that you can conceal makes the most sense. I've thought this way for quite some time, really ever since I did my COVID-19 um, EDC essentials video. Um, I've been running larger capacity handguns or guns that can accept you know larger capacity magazines quite comfortably and naturally. So this is, like I said, naturally set up with a 17 round magazine. And then I have a 20 round offset extended magazine with it so I think that that is a lot of firepower but at the same time too as we've seen and as we continue to see a lot of social unrest both here in the US and in other countries it makes just a lot of sense genuinely to have a handgun platform that can that can dish out a lot of firepower just because it's not so much about you know um, 
It's not necessarily about just trying to end one singular threat. There is a reasonable concern, as we have seen in the past, even in the US, that you may have to stop multiple threats trying to kill you. So anyways, I won't dig too much into this because YouTube hates when we talk about guns. However, it still is totally viable and worth mentioning things about firearms. So anyways, that is the platform. Also worth mentioning, it has uh, my Prodigy has a Viper Vortex red dot on it. So that's about the only customization and this is in a tier one concealed axis slim holster so for those people wondering what this whole setup is that is the setup and I do have other videos digging more specifically into the actual platform itself all right now getting into some more of the core tools this is probably where I've done the most slimming back of tools um, in the past I've talked about running pry bars and all kinds of fun things and those are great options but I genuinely think running a flashlight a knife, a multi-tool, and a lighter. And of course, things like wallets and a pen are pretty nice things. Now, like I said, I don't I don't know if a pen is exact, exactly an essential. I do tend to use pens quite a bit, so you will see me usually rocking a pen. I've left it specifically out of the essentials though, because it's not something that I use every day. Whereas everything you see here, um, maybe with, with regards not the lighter, everything else I use pretty much every day. The only reason I throw the lighter on here is because I'm a survivalist at core or at the core. And of course, being able to start fire easily with something like a lighter is very invaluable to me in my opinion so the lighter gets a pass just because it offers a level of utility that while I rarely use it when it is useful it's critically useful so the lighter gets a pass aside from that of course we have the quintessentials things like flashlights you can't see in the dark this is good for pairing with a firearm potentially that's why you do not see me with a weapon mounted light and once again I have videos and will be making videos more specifically of like how I run my handgun setup and stuff and but just like this is a kind of quick allusion to it you know I like having an off mounted um, flashlight just so I can use a flashlight independently of my handgun so for me like I said you specifically won't see weapon mounted lights on my guns unless they're home defense setup uh, kind of things um, usually if I'm going to EDC a gun I do not want a weapon mounted light which kind of flies in the face of a lot of people a lot of people like weapon mounted lights and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But for me, I like the ability to use a flashlight as a utility object apart from a handgun mounted light or weapon mounted light and all, as a whole. So anyways, that is for EDC, a flashlight is super important. The next two for me are also super important. A lot of people consider it redundancy because the multi-tool itself, it, especially this one in this case, has a knife, but I do really like the charge. I like the tool set. And in fact, the charge does have two knives on it. It has the fully serrated and the plain edge blades. But honestly, I do prefer having a workhorse. And in my opinion, even when you have a you know knife that is on a multi-tool, you're never going to get the same functionality is having a dedicated or dedicated knife so you know multi-tool is exactly what it is it's a multiple it's multiple tools in one so obviously a multi-tool is never going to be as good as a standalone plier it's never going to be as good as a standalone saw a standalone knife however by and large the pliers on this multi-tool are good enough for me to do most of what i need once again the saw is good enough to do most of what i need on a daily basis if i'm going out into the wilderness obviously i will have a dedicated saw for sawing down trees or bucking wood, you know, doing the dedicated tasks. So for me, this multi-tool is passable in basically its whole tool set outside of the knife because I do a lot of things like breaking down a bunch of cardboard boxes and stuff. And so when I'm sitting there using a knife for 30, 40 minutes, breaking stuff down um, or unboxing stuff, um, the knife on a multi-tool is just in my opinion a little bit lacking so i prefer to have a dedicated knife and also too there's no denying i am a knife collector so there is some bias there but there is also some genuine like i said there is some genuineness here as well that genuinely when i use a knife i am using a knife usually for an extended period of time and so i prefer to have better blade steel better blade geometry and most importantly better ergonomics 
for extended use. The knife on a multi-tool, especially something like this Charge Plus, is great if you need to whip it out, cut something, as you guys can see here, mine does see use, so I do use the blade on here, but I use it more for, you know, once again, those kind of just quick need to open something real fast kind of um, situations, whereas if I'm actually going to use a knife to use a knife, I'm going to use something dedicated to that. So in my opinion, both have their place in EDC, and if I absolutely had to pick one, I would still pick the multi-tool over a knife specifically, but that is just for me in my personal situation where I like being able to have the pliers. I use pliers. I like being able to have the scissor. I use the scissors. I use the, um, uh, what is this? I use the driver bits, I should say, like bits, plural. Um, I, I use all of those things on a fairly regular basis. Now, like I said, it, it, because this is my EDC, I can carry whatever I want, so I do carry both, and I do regard both as separate entities, even though I know a lot of people, especially my commenters, are like, well, that has a knife, so that's a knife too. But for me, it's a multi-tool, and that's it. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed taking a look at some of my EDC essentials. Once again, not too much has changed outside of, of course, like different knives, different guns, different stuff, but a lot of the core, like, principles and philosophy of EDC essentials has remained the same. And that's just because honestly, you know, by and large, these are the tools that at least I use the most frequently throughout my daily life when I encounter um, or there are things that I like to have for preparedness sake. Obviously, I'm not using a handgun every day. Obviously, I'm not starting wildfires every day, you know, with a lighter. But it's one of those things where if you need a lighter to start a fire and the alternative is freezing to death, it's pretty important to have a lighter. With handguns, it's kind of the same thing, right? It beats the heck out of dying. So it's a low bar, but it's an important low bar to not cross. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God